wonderful meeting you or not it's been a pleasure thank you always. So hi, I'm Arnaud Legal. I'm a CSC from Aruba in France. Uh, I'm mainly focused on Aruba 6 switches uh, portfolio, but also on the uh, network automation. Awesome, Arnaud. Welcome to California, Roseville. First of all, it's a great weather today, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's really great to be there. Thank you. Awesome. My name is Yesh. I am also focused mainly on the CX switching. I manage a technical marketing group at Aruba. Amazing time we have in the Aruba AOSCX portfolio. Yeah. As you see, Absolutely. we have all the way from the access switches, the access switch which you can think of, which is a 6,000 box, which you, as you see here, which is running the same operating system yeah. on this small box versus the same operating system which runs on the such a big box. Can you think of AOSCX running on a 10 by 10 and also same operating system running on a 10, char 10 slot chassis, which is a 6410. Yeah. This has, that comes with a lot of modular capabilities and many other things which we already talked about in our previous video. The key part of today for us is to talk about what is a new addition to the AOS CX family. The new addition to the AOS CX family is 6200M family. As we are talking about the 6200M family, it's a modular switch which we are introducing at the very end of the access where you call it the IDF, which was having a 6200F, which is all fixed, all fixed 6200F where the fans were fixed. Yeah, absolutely. And also the power supply was also fixed. The one key reason which customers really wanted the upgrade with the modular uh, 60 200M was main key part is the power. Yeah. If you look at it on 6200F, it supports 30 watt of power, which is a great thing to cover all the access point, which are 500 series access point, which will go till five gigahertz. When you think about the six gigahertz, which are the new access points from Aruba, they need a power which is more than the 30 watt power. Yeah. That means we have on the same closet where the customers have deployed the great box, which is the Aruba 6200F, on the same closet, we have to give them a next modular SKU, which will have a capability of 60 watt power. That's what we are bringing in as a new addition to the 6200F family with a new addition of modular switches, where you'll have a power modular as well as the fan tray modular. We have uplink MagSec capable switches as we release to the market, the 6200M, and the hardware, remember, it is capable of doing the downlink MaxSec also. That's a that's a key addition to support to be able to support the MaxSec, especially on the uh, on the uplink side of the device between because we have a lot of customers who are requesting to be able to encrypt the traffic and to secure the traffic between closets. So having that in such a kind of devices in a modular format with the uh, redundancy of the power supply, the fan trail and so forth, is a key thing. So this is really a great addition to the 6200 family. Absolutely, absolutely. So bringing the LRM capabilities on these switches. I know you have sold a lot of these AOSCX platform in the past, yeah. uh, Arnaud. Before I jump into a lot more details about the hardware, I just want to understand from you how customers are loving our AOSCX platform because it's all the way goes from the edge to the data center and how do they receive this operating system? And if you can explain in your own words, that would definitely help us. So actually the um, AUS 6, the network operating system by, by, by itself, is highly appreciated by the customers because this is seen as a kind of new generation of network operating system. Because it is based on microservices, this is database driven. We can afford, offer a lot of residency of stability um, on the network, on the, on, the, on the network devices. And so that's key for the main, vast majority of the customers to be able to, to have a network which is highly resilient, highly stable. Yeah. And yet, in addition to that, thanks to the structure of the network operating system, we have now a fully programmable operating system, which is also key for a lot of customers who are starting their journey into the network automation, uh, automation part. Yeah. And because we are on this kind of network operating system, because we are on something which is fully private. We also offer some innovative framework, which is our, which are, sorry, um, 
fully embedded into the, the operating system like any. So that's really a key thing. And the last point and the last key benefits um, regarding AUS CX, and you, you, you have mentioned that uh, earlier in this video, is the fact that we can offer all those benefits end to end from the low end in the compass, so the low end devices in the compass to the top of racks, including the ruggedized devices. And that's key to be able to offer the same experience, the same user experience, the same management experience end to end from the compass to the data center. Awesome. Awesome. You, you clearly covered the, the best part of the AOSCX. The one thing which I want to highlight what you really said was the introduction of the microservices with the database architecture. Yeah. The database is, as you clearly said, is fully programmable with the REST API. Exactly. Where the users can either use the Ansible or they can use their own network management station or exactly. we have our the most loud platform, which is called Aruba Central, which is there as part of the cloud service as a SaaS application, or they can also have as an on-prime, as central on-prime. They see the same operating system, how you talk about the edge to the uh, data center, yeah. AOSCX, the same feeling they get on-prime management or on the cloud management. You will have the, now that we have the same central management, which is a SaaS-based application, which is running Aruba Central, same UIs, that means customer is managing onboarding capabilities, monitoring capabilities, troubleshooting tech capabilities, AI assist, all of this AI ops capability, everything is there on the SaaS application as Aruba Central. But we also know that some of the customers are interested on Central on Prime. That means they want to run a management using the on Prime version. Yeah. So they have a central, which is a cloud-based, we also support for managing all our switches, access point, and our gateways. And as you know, we also have an on-prime version. Yeah. What do you think about COP, that is central on-prime, was a central, and how do the customers love both of this platform with a different vertical or not? This is, this is really important to, to be able to get the same solution, the same management solution to be in cloud for, as you mentioned, a lot of customers who are maybe worldwide, they have a lot of premises, locations spread of all over the world. So to be able to uh, to manage all those things uh, from a central place of management, but also to get a non prime version because some customers, because they have some security requirements who um, to the, to the security part. Yeah. So it's really important to bring the same level, the same user experience in terms of management in the SaaS app, in the, as a service ma uh, manner, but also as an on-prem manner. Now that you spoke about central on-prem requirement and also about central, we know that the central on-prem and central both can manage complete set of Aruba products, whether it is a gateway, whether it is an access point, or Aruba suite. Exactly. Now, I'm so excited that you came all the way from France to work with me to unbox this 6200M family, which is such a long waiting for our customers because such a box is very much required in a deployment like school environment where they have 100 to 300 users, where they've already deployed the 6200F platform. They had the 30 watt of power, but to upgrade their new facility of Wi-Fi, they really wanted their 60 watt of power. Exactly. Now, as you see in front of you, we have 6200M, which is a modular 6200M platform exactly. with modular capability of fan tray and a power supply. Yeah. As you look at it, this is such a beautifully, we build this platform in-house. You might be knowing HP is very strong in building this hardware with high quality. The one thing which I wanted to take and so pride about is the HP ASIC. We are in a seventh generation of ASIC on this access platform, mm -hmm. as you know. Yeah. These ASIC has come a long way with the flexible pipeline, whether it's ingress or egress with a VOQ architecture. This virtual output queuing is not just a word or not. VOQ from all the way from the data center back to the campus or wherever you deploy. Mm. What it does is or not, is so important where you get this pipeline of traffic. It understands whether the egress queues are full or not. If it is egress queues are full, it automatically drops at the ingress itself where you don't have to traverse all the way this packets across the fabric and waste the bandwidth. That's, That's the awesome. beauty of AOSCX platform with our own ASIC. That's Why we build our, our own ASIC is another big reason is we can do 
quick innovation. As you know, the 6300, the premium access platform, brings that capability of IP fix, mm. application recognition. These features are not easy to build with a merchant silicon because of the time consumption. Where with our own ASIC, with our own SDK development, with our own operating system development, we can bring that innovative feature to the customers so yeah. quickly. Yeah. So can you just tell us, you have deployed the 6300 platform so well, you already know the bigger benefit which brings 6300 platform brings. What do you think the big differences between the new platform which we're introducing, which is called a 6200 Yeah. And the M family brings, as you know, the modular power supply and the mob modular fan. What do you think the big differences, according to you, which the 6200 M and the 6200? So obviously now that we don't have any difference in terms of modularity for the power supply for the fan trays, now the differences between the 6200 M or the 6200 family by itself and the 6200 family are for me mainly focused on four Key points. So the first point is about the support of PTP. So PTP is supported on the 6200 awesome. family, not on the 6200 uh, family. So this is very important, mainly for very critical applications. Um, the other topic, which is also important, is the support of IPFIX. So yeah. IPFIX is supported on the 6200 uh, family, not on the 6200 family. So IPFIX will bring a lot of capabilities in terms of traffic visibility, um, telemetry and so forth. So that's the kind of thing that we will uh, benefit with the CC300 family. The third topic for me is also the support of EVPN. Yeah. We are more and more talking these days about fabrics in the compass. So fabric in the compass, we are talking about obviously the centralized fabric with UBT or dynamic segmentation, but we are more and more talking about fabrics based on EVPN and VXN. Yep. And so on this kind of architecture, in, in this kind of network, we need EVPN when we are talking about fabric in the compass. Absolutely. And so EVPN is supported today on 6300, but not on the 6200. And the, the last key point for me is also the uplinks and the speed uh, we can find on the uplinks. The 6300 can support 25 and 50 gig, while the 6200 will only support 1 gig and 10 gig. That's for me the four key points, the four differences between the premium family, so the 6300 and the 6200. Awesome. So you really covered it so nicely about 6200 family and a 6300 family. So where customer really wants the premium access platform with a more uplink bandwidth, they exactly. always opt for more scale also. Remember, the 6200 family is for a different set of customer verticals versus the 6300. Both platform brings the, its own capabilities as you look at on a AOSCX product family. So this is a wonderful thing which happened. Let's talk about a few minutes about what are the other differentiating factors. Can I make use of the fan tray of a 6300 on a 6200 EM family or not? Yeah, absolutely. So the fan trays and the power supplies are common between the two families. So you can take one power supply from the 6200 and put it in a 6200 and that's the same uh, for the fan trays. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's a, that's a wonderful engineering, isn't it? So if you have a customer who is always having a, some platform with the 6300 and he has deployed those switches with the 6300, he has his own inventory of power supply. He can always yeah. use those power supply exactly. or a fan tray. Let's shift the gear and talk about the premium feature, which we call as a stacking on Aruba switches. Yeah. As you know, the 6300, F or the 6300M brings you the family of stacking together. That's Is correct. it the same way you do think the 6200F and the 6300M, we can stack them together? Yes, that's also, also possible on, the, on this family. So we will be able to stack using VSF, so with the limit of eight devices per stack, obviously, so this, this will not change. Uh, but we'll be able into the same stack to bring 6200F, so uh, with the fixed uh, power supplies. Um, and we will also, we will be able to add the 6200M. So if you maybe have into the same stack to host some critical endpoints like APs, like cameras, like some, some, some stuff like that, and you need to get really high resiliency in terms of hardware, so using uh, power supplies and so forth, but for the other part in the stack to host the endpoints, which are maybe less critical, you can use 6200F into the same stack. 
Awesome, awesome. What a great summary of hardware, software, and a management. At the same time, I also want to bring a new way you can also consume this all hardware from Aruba, the model of NAS. The same operating system, as you said, uh, is running on a 6000 platform in an mm -hmm. IT environment, which is the smallest box, which we can think of in a family of Absolutely. CX. Yeah. And we have a biggest chassis, as you know, 6410, which is running the same operating system, mm -hmm. as you already mentioned. I want to also bring you something about the OT environment. Yeah. The IT you clearly called out on how we build the IT environment, whether it is a small campus access or with a big data center with a 400 gig capacity. But look at this way of the OT environment. We all know OT environment is totally different from an IT Absolutely. environment. And this fantastic box with capability of this small ports, as you see in front of that one, with IP30 compliance can sit in an OT environment doing an Ethernet switching. And That's if right. you manage the same switch through Aruba Central or Aruba Central on Prime, that's a fantastic thing in an OT environment, isn't it? So you bringing the OT and IT integration together, whether it is a factory outlet, which is running completely at a different temperature, where in case of an IT environment, you have a control of the temperature and the cooling system. That's a great, uh, that's a great thing. Yeah, so that's what I would call it as ARCX, whether it is an IT or an OT, from all the way from the access switches from the edge till the data center, which is providing you a one gig capability at the all the way at the access port and the 400 gig at the data center. Yeah. We bring the same operating system. We know where to innovate very well. As you know, the innovation happens more at the edge. That's where we have our, our own ASIC, where in case of merchant silicon, we understand the way we are running with the industry standard and we have to cope up with the industry standard. That's where we keep our the bigger boxes, as you see 400 gig capacity boxes, which we have in the data center, we keep the merchant silicon on them. Perfect. We want to give all the options to our customers, whether they want to innovate at the edge or they want to innovate at the core or data center. Every aspect we think through, and also the one key point I want to mention, Arnaud, is the ecosystem partnership. Yeah. We always run our AOSCX with the standard-based protocols. We always keep ourselves as we have to adhere to the ecosystem partnership, whether we want to send our log information to somebody, we want to follow the standard. At the same time, even the protocol stacks, we want to follow the standard. We don't want to bring proprietary solution, proprietary protocol, and lock the customer. That's our unique solution in the market. That's how we are able to sell so many varieties of AOSC X switches all the way from access till the data center. And that's a key point. That's Thanks really a, a key point. Thanks a lot for coming all the way from France and uh, helping me to unbox the 600M family of switches. It brings great capabilities, as you explained. Yeah. One is the modular capability of power supply, which we have. As you see, this can be a modular. And as you are holding a fan tray, which is so nice that it is bringing that capability to the 6200M family. The second capability is the MagSec. And the LRM capability is another capability which we are bringing on the 6200M family, which is key part. And I just want to, want to say, again, reiterate that 60 watt because of the companies are moving towards mobile first. That's correct. Implementing the six gigahertz, that's where the 6200M family can help in the same closet where they can buy the 6200F where they want a five gigahertz and also mix it with a six gigahertz with a 60 watt capability. That's correct. This is an awesome platform for all the customers to consume on the closet of their IDF. Thanks a lot again. Wonderful meeting you, Arnaud. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Always.